What's going on guys? Welcome back to College Sports Revive for another installment of the College Hoops 2K Legacy here with Coach Carter and our beloved UT Martin Skyhawks. In the last episode, we recapped a pretty weird part of the season for us, but more on that later on. For now, we got to focus on this Tennessee State matchup. The 5-9 Tigers have one of the best, if not the best, player in the Ohio Valley Conference, Jasper Powell. We didn't see him last year because he broke his wrist earlier on in the season and he wasn't available for either of the games he played against them last year but he's back and lighting up the conference and they also have Emmanuel O'Brien the 6'8 forward won Ohio Valley Conference's Freshman of the Year award last year and just going through the measurables of this team as you can see one of the tallest teams in the entire conference you got 6'9 small forward Kalen Bush 6'9 Adrian August one of the better freshmen in the conference and with all these skyscrapers that <laughs> Tennessee State has It'll be interesting to see how Coach Carter tries to counter Powell because if he wants to put a forward on him, then he'll have matchup issues on other sides of the court. And that's where you see teams really get into issues trying to counter this offense. But anyways, like I said in the beginning of the episode when I said it's just kind of a weird part of the season for us, I mean, we started out the year 4-0 in non-conference play and you could be saying on one hand, hey, we look a lot better at this point of the season than we did in year one. But at the same token, here in year two, we're not the underdogs anymore, just trying to make a name for ourselves. We haven't looked as sharp here in conference play, and I feel like that's all due to some detriments right now that we gotta iron out. And a big storyline is the inconsistency of David Giles, our top scorer. He just has not had it in these last few games, and our defense hasn't looked as good in conference as it did at a conference. So we travel across the state to Nashville, Tennessee to meet up with these Tigers, and Tennessee State been a little bit underachieving this year so far. They only set up 3-5 and five in the conference, and they're the representatives last year from our conference to make the NCAA tournament, and they even won a game as a 14th seed with an upset. But not even 10 seconds into the game, and who else but Jasper Powell to get us kicked off here tonight. And then on the next trip up the floor for the Tigers, it's Emmanuel O'Brien collecting a rebound and putting it in. The OVC's top freshman last year, he will also record a basket to push the lead to 3 here in the early stages. And Marcus Saunders finds the fading easily as he knots it up at 6, easily with 4 out of our first 6 points of the game. Then on this possession, we just lose track of Jasper Powell and you can't do that. He will make you pay. He's more of a true slasher, but he's got NBA range when he needs it, as he's got the first 7 for the other guys. Now Caitlin Bush at the free throw line. This time it's Javaris Howard collecting a miss and putting it in. Another thing that's been a little bit lacking recently is our rebounding. That's come a long way from year one, but recently we've been just letting up too many rebounds. But one guy who's really helped us is Christopher Fay. His rebounding's been great, and he records a tip in there. Kind of sucks losing Floyd Zubek in the offseason. He's a senior, but Christopher Fay is going to fill his shoes well. We already know. As Jasper Powell, no surprise there, knocks down yet another three as Coach Carter's defense is getting torched by the senior. And look at this, another catch and shoot opportunity. He's going to have to switch the matchup. He's been trying to put different looks on Powell. He started out the game with Ballard, then he switched it to Saunders. He's scrambling right now. We might just have to put Giles on him and see what he can do. And now moving the ball around against this zone, there is Saunders with his first triple of the night. The lead right now at 6. It was 10 earlier on in the game as Adrian August drives baseline, gets past Gene Schofield, and finishes over the long wingspan of Christopher Fay. Our defense just getting torched early, not only by Jasper Powell, but other guys also making their case for some points here as well. And now Adrian August, a rare big man in the conference who can stretch the floor as he knocks it down from the corner. August will definitely be one of the most dangerous freshmen in years to come. And now Caitlin Bush tries it from 15 feet, no good, and this is what we have to do. Only 16 points as a team, inexcusable. We gotta get out and run the floor a little bit, and Gene Schofield will hand this one off to Christopher Fay to complete the secondary break. Fay with six points, one of the lone bright step outs in the first half for the Skyhawks. And now we dwindle the half down to a dozen seconds left. We wanna get the ball in Dwight Easley's hands. He's been so good at the end of halves, but the trap's coming. They saw it coming. Three seconds left, easily. Flash to the ball. One second left. Over two defenders. He tickles the twine to end the half. So a little bit of momentum as we go into the locker room. Down 14. This Tennessee State Club is definitely a lot better than what their record shows. I guess we might have gotten a little complacent coming into this game. Another half where Giles had zero points. 
And Powell finished the half of 14. He started to cool off once we switched Ballard back onto him and brought double teams whenever he drove the lane. And coming right out of the locker room, Marcus Saunders draining a triple. And that's one guy that we need to get the ball to a lot more. He's the first Skyhawk player in double figures, and his percentages have been good from all areas of the floor. Now down 11, Saunders driving the lane once again, and that's something that we did a lot in the second half. Our jump shots aren't falling, especially from Easley and Giles, so we drove the lane a lot more, looked inside a lot more, and that seemed to result in some success finally. Great pass from Zubek finding Easley cutting down the lane, and Kalen Bush will be the first Tennessee State Tiger in foul trouble. That's his third of the contest. Still got over 13 minutes left to play, and a few of his teammates would also follow suit soon. And due to Easley's free throws, the lead drops below 10. But would it be enough though? That's the question. Would switching up the offensive game plan be enough to get back in the game? And Easley wants to hear none of that. He tips a pass on the press. And Ballard collects it. Easley fills the lane. And that layup, <laughs> I don't even have to say anything about that finish. The lead's 11 for the Tigers. Powell pulls it again from way downtown. It's off the mark, but it would be Emmanuel O'Brien putting in more second chance points. Pump fake twice and put it in, but quickly up the floor in a very similar fashion. Zubek collects his own miss. Pump fakes twice and gets fouled on his third attempt right there. And it would be Emmanuel O'Brien that's tacked with the foul. And UT Martin already one foul away from being in the bonus. But LaShawn Williamson from the corner, haven't said his name much today, but he gets to drop. A very good complimentary piece to Jasper Powell there in the backcourt is Williamson. Now with 10 seconds left on the shot clock, Giles still scoreless in the game, but the ball works around to Dwight Easley with the shot clock turned on, that's when he's at his best. A Baker's dozen for the 6'2 sophomore today, and it's been Saunders and Easley who have carried the load trying to keep us in it. Another offensive rebound will relinquish, but how about Christopher Fay knocking that one loose? He's playing some defense, and it's Blair Renfro capping off that fast break with a 16 foot jump shot. The lead is back to 12. Five and a half left to go. Saunders trying to isolate. He gets past his man. And he draws the foul from Adrian August. Skyhawks, like I said before, are just continuing to do work at that charity strike. They're already in the double bonus with five and some change left to play. Saunders would make two of two. But the real break that we get here with him going to the line is that we can get our starters back in the game with the stoppage of play. And after Marcus sinks his free throw, you already know our press gets to set up as Kalen Bush on the inbound. This one is tipped again by Easley. He doesn't have the lane that he did last time when he made that acrobatic layup, so he makes a smart play. Bounce pass to Giles, who finally cashes in with his first made field goal of the game. He's missed his first seven attempts and finally gets the drop. And I just wish Giles could become more consistent because our offense looks so much better whenever he's on the top of his game and easily is fouled on that layup attempt. Giles is the one who started the break, getting the steal. The momentum starting to swing in our favor as we almost make him cough it up, but Kalen Bush retains possession, works around to LaShawn Williamson, who has had all of his eight points in the second half of action. And now the deficit is nine with less than four minutes left to play. Easily running the pick and roll with Foy Zubek, but he hands it off to Joey Ballard. Great look there from Zubek, and Dwight easily keeps his hands active like he's done all day on that press. He records another theft, and they go back inside once again for Joey Ballard to record back-to-back -back baskets. The Tigers hold a five-point cushion, the slimmest lead they've had all second half, but now it's Jasper Powell dishing it inside to Adrian August, who puts in a crazy layup and an even better pass from Jasper Powell. Now with 110 left to go, we have to record a stop here. Too much defensive pressure on Powell, leaves Williamson open, and he continues his big second half. He was one of the big reasons the Tigers were able to close out this game, and they survived the UT Martin Skyhawks by five. We've talked about the recent lackluster rebounding and defense for the Skyhawks and David Giles' inconsistencies, but one thing that we need to bring up is that in a lot of these games that we're losing here in conference play, it just seems like we never put our best foot forward in the first half. A lot of games that we've lost recently, we get down big and then we have to play catch up the entire time and that's not the team that we're built to be. But the next time out on the hardwood, we secure a 13 point win versus Southeast Missouri and these Red Hawks, they finished last in the conference last year, but this year they got a respectable team as you guys will see. They're starting to make some noise at the end of the year, but we clinch 
a win here at our home court, 85 to 72. Good game from Giles finally, and we were able to survive Chris Bowden Key's 19 points. Very next time out on the floor, Eastern Kentucky beats us by eight. One of the better teams in the entire conference, JT Mobley, Elliott Armstead, and Tyler Holiday, as you can see, they all average above 10 points per game. Three guys averaging double figures, that's something that no other team in the conference can claim. And then we beat Eastern Illinois in an overtime game. EIU, the worst team in our conference by record. Another close game that we just didn't look very convincing in. We were able to survive Dwayne Sato's 27, but that's a team that we should beat a lot better. But at the end of the day, we did get the win. And now we sit at 7-6, and six, tied for fourth in the conference, and Tennessee Tech holds that tiebreaker since they beat us earlier on in the year off that heartbreaking loss. Dwight easily almost gave us the win. But as we move along, another team that's right behind us in the standings is Murray State, our rivals. You guys know them very well. Corey Barnes, one of the most prolific scorers in the entire conference. And last year, you guys already know the story. It came down to a winner take all for that final spot in the playoffs. And we were able to try out Murray State in a double overtime thriller. So the Racers still trying to get their revenge on us. Dimitri Woodson is one of the better two-way players in the conference and Sebastian Farley starting at power forward is a top ranked freshman across the entire conference. He comes in at a 73 overall. So it seems like always something crazy happens when we play these rivals of Murray State and we travel to Murray, Kentucky to take on another in-state opponent. And the racers living up to their name, racing the ball up the court here in the early goings as Corey Barnes tops off that fast break, their top scorer. And Right now, we just got to try to do what we can to negate another slow start. That's a big reason why we've been losing so many games recently as David Giles gets it going. He shot 2 of 7 last game, so inconsistent, but we're just trying to figure out what he needs to get back on track. And check out the quick hands from Marcus Saunders ripping Corey Barnes, and he's one of the fastest players in the conference. Not a chance that the racers stop the ball. Marcus Saunders, such a great athlete, he gets on the board for the first time tonight. Now with a five point lead, Saunders at the controls, he finds easily with a one on one opportunity. Both of those guys, both of those sophomores, so good when it's just a one on one opportunity. Now up 20 to 12 at the end of the shot clock, kicks it out. Faye to Saunders as he knocks it down from the corner. Yes, finally a game where we're the ones getting out in front early. And our offense was clicking in. It was really a team effort. Everybody was scoring the rock, but on the other side of things, Barnes was a one man show. Corey Barnes with 11. He's carrying the load tonight. He's top three in the conference in points per game, so that's what we expected. And how about Giles ripping Demetri Woodson, and he beats him up the floor to punch it down with two hands. I feel like one way to fix Giles' inconsistencies just has to be to get him out in the open court, limit the three-point shots, and try to do more work inside the arc. And now less than 10 seconds left to play. Demetri Woodson's three-point attempt off the mark. Saunders pushing the ball. He gives it to you-know-who. Dwight Easley with an explosion to the rim. Can you believe he keeps delivering at the end of the half? It's insane. <laughs> Easley finishes the half with nine points. A good offensive showing for him personally and for the team in this first half. UT Martin doing a good job spreading out the attack. We got five players with four plus points. And on Murray State side of things, most of the damage has been coming from one guy, that's Corey Barnes, with 11. Now we jump in, up 6, and the ball works around to Dimitri Woodson, who's made some shots here and there, assisting Sebastian Farley. The racers starting to spread out the attack like UT Martin's been doing has been really resulting in the stat sheet. Only down 4 now, but Joey Ballard with a nice post move. Great offense there going from high to low there, that's how you beat that 2-3 zone. But immediately on the other side, Farley attacking Zubek one-on-one -on -one with the spin to the finish as the top freshman in the conference has his second basket. Down by one possession, less than 11 minutes to play. Demetri Woodson comes off the screen, he gets fouled, and he puts in the three-point bomb with an opportunity to go to the line to tack on one more. Easily breaks the golden rule in basketball, you never foul a jump shooter. And that'll tie the game up at 39. And there's a nice pick and roll between Woodson and Carlos Thompson. If you remember last year, Thompson had a lot of hustle plays against us, a lot of tip and rebounds. He's normally the hard working glue guy for Murray State, but today he's put in a lot of baskets. He's got eight. But Christopher Faye with the steal. And it's Blair Renfro filling the lane. Normally we see him finishing the break from the perimeter, but this time he cuts inside and D. Cartwright finds him. 
and Renfro displays some finishing despite mostly being a jump shooter exclusively. Now Murray State back on offense. Carlos Thompson fights through the contact from Christopher Fay. And Thompson is in double figures tonight. We don't see that too often from him. Like I said, he's normally a grit and grind side guy. The 6'9 center Thompson misses the free throw, so it's still not up at 45 until Blair Renfro knocks it down from the top of the key. Great find from Gene Schofield. And how about Luke Lawton with the hustle, with the chase down block on Johannes Monroe, who has had a tough day today. We already know Luke Lawton, such a hardworking freshman. He's always going to bring defense. And Christopher Fay with the mismatch inside gets the post hook over Wyatt Stallworth. And Fay's had some baskets here and there. Fay has seven points today, and he's shown flashes of future greatness. But how about Carlos Thompson? More second chance points for the hardworking center. And Murray State back down to only one possession ball game. And Ballard gets trapped into the post, and he kicks it out to Easley. So, normally so reliable from that range. No good there. And it's Monroe leading the break. He'll kick it around to Jacoby Landry, who pockets the triple. Yet another tie here in this ball game. And we already know it's going to be crazy anytime we face off against these Murray State Racers, our heated rivals. And now Easley and Zubek running the pick and roll. Easily just forcing it up there. The block goes to the freshman Farley. And on the other side of things, Johannes Monroe banks it in from five feet out. Just like that, yet yeah, another tie in the ball game. And now Murray State goes into their half court 1 3 1 press. They bring Monroe to try to trap easily, but that lets Giles have an open look. But Giles is just so inconsistent from three point land in the last few games. And immediately up the other side, Monroe, one of the best slashes in the league, very athletic for a wing player. And he will take the lead for Murray State. 54-52, 3-10 left to play. Saunders attacks the zone, finds some space, and that allows David Giles to leak out to the right corner. And Saunders, great pass, and Giles knocks it through. We gotta get Giles more looks inside the perimeter if his three-point bombs aren't falling. 2.30 left to play. It's Saunders in the post. A lot of defensive pressure on him, so they work it around. It's Giles. Back to Easley for the lead, and that one is nothing but net. Easley, what a great game for the sophomore. 14 for him on the game, and he's your leading scorer for the Skyhawks. Woodson drives the lane. That one just rims out, but White Staller with a second chance. Yet another miss for the Murray State Racers inside, and Saunders has a chance to slash, but he instead pulls it out. We come up empty on that possession, so we've got 60 seconds left to play. Farley reverses it around to Woodson, just off the mark. Tough rim for Woodson as he tried to bank it in oh man almost a bad play from Easley and Saunders thinks about it from three-point land but once again Saunders thinks better of it and resets the offense we're up three with 36 seconds left to play Ballard in the corner Easley finds it at the elbow and he finds the slashing Ballard who gets his shot rejected by Farley 26 seconds left to play Monroe quickly up the court Barnes back to Monroe they're playing hot potato with it and Monroe is fouled on the jump shot. He knocks it through, plus having a chance to tie it up at the free throw line easily for the second time in the second half. Fouls a jump shooter, and that's the number one rule on defense. You cannot break, and he's done it twice. And him and Ballard, not a very good interaction there. Ballard trying to console him, but Easy wants none of that. So Johannes Monroe, who's not had a very good day today, shooting under 40% from the field, he steps to the line with an opportunity to redeem himself and tie it up. It's up and it swishes through. Tied back up at 57 once again and easily takes it the other way. But Murray State's in their half court 1-3-1 one one trap. He takes it to the right being closely guarded by Woodson. The ref starts his count. He needs to get rid of it. It's going to be a 5 second closely guarded call. Oh no, Dwight easily. He is throwing this game for the Skyhawks, and if you didn't know, in high school and college there's a rule called five seconds closely guarded. If your defender is within an arm length away from you, then the ref can start his count. And if it gets to five seconds, then that's a turnover. Basically just a reward for playing good defense. So now we need to stop on defense. It's a tie game with 10 seconds left to go. Woodson fires it up to Monroe. He gets past Giles, but Zubek with a clutch steal. Giles scoops it up, fires it to the leaking Easley, and he goes up with it, and he gets fouled. And one, and one for Dwight Easley with 2.8 left on the clock. Easley, he didn't let the last possessions get to his head. He stays in it, and he makes a big play. He kept his head up, and look at this interaction between him and Joey Ballard a lot better this time around. And these last few minutes easily should be a lesson for all you young players out there. Anytime you commit a turnover, take a bad shot, 
You can't put your head down. It's always next play, next play. That's the mentality you got to have because basketball is such a quick game. There's always going to be a time to make a good play. And how about this? Easily misses the free throw on purpose. And Corey Barnes for the win at half court. And oh my goodness, he almost made that. <laughs> but thank goodness we make it out of Murray, Kentucky with a win over our heated rivals. Something crazy always happens when we face off against these racers, our heated rivals. And once again, today was no exception to that. I know the shot by Easley at the end, that layup that he converted the end one on was great. And the, the pass to get him that opportunity from Giles was even better. But how about the steal by Floyd Zubek to set all of that up? He ripped Johannes Monroe, and that's what set it up. And that's why we love Floyd Zubek, a master of the little things. So moving on, we take a look at the conference standings. After that win, we sit at 9-6 behind Eastern Kentucky and Moorhead State. And we're facing off against EKU in this next game. The Colonels are going to be missing their top player, JT Mobley, who's top five in scoring and assists per game in the conference. But it doesn't mean that this team is any less dangerous. Elliot Armstead, still one of the better guards in the entire conference. And making his first collegiate debut as in the starting lineup today will be Stuart Wells replacing Mobley. And speaking of Wells, he's the guy who gets the Colonels on the board. Not a bad way to start your starting college uh, experience. But on the other end, here comes Ballard, taking it up the floor, ball reversal out to Marcus Saunders, and you know he's so good when he gets that opportunity to slash, finishing over Benjamin Kay inside. The Colonels are number one in the conference in three-point shooting percentage, and it wouldn't take them long to display that right in front of our eyes, as Tyler Holiday with still a hand in his face, tickles the twine, as it's now an 8-6 to six ball game, UT Martin still on top, but Elliott Armstead also pockets one. We finally were able to break our first half struggles in the Murray State game and that ended out in a win. So what we need to continue to do is avoid those slow starts that we've been getting ourselves into, especially against a team like this with this much firepower. Some reserve players check in on both sides and one of them is Shannon Eccles who drove and got Lincoln McKenzie that open look by collapsing the defense on him and now it's a six point game for the Colonels. And D. Cartwright slashes finds Luke Lawton of all people who actually drains a corner three. Lawton, not really the type of guy you want to see shooting that shot, but if it goes in, Coach Carter can't complain. Now with six minutes left to play, Lawton, does he have another one? Bang! Another one from the freshman from New Zealand. He's only made two on the entire season. He's shooting two of ten from beyond the arc in his freshman campaign, but he's already doubled that total here in the first half of action. But more lazy defense from UT Martin, Tyler Holiday, nobody back in transition except for him. 25 to 18 game as Saunders almost gets it ripped, but he ends up making a smart play as Ballard finds Floyd Zubek. And Floyd was one of the guys who really kept us in the game. Our offense not looking very good in the first half of action, but Zubek heads into halftime with eight points. And Elliott Armstead knocks it through once again. That perimeter defense just way too relaxed today for UT Martin. And with 17 seconds left in the first half, Armstead 1-on-1 -on -one against Saunders. He dishes it to Grant Foster. Even the deep bench guys like Foster getting in on the fun from beyond the arc. UT Martin heads into the intermission and it's been a game of runs so far. EKU had their big one to begin the game. Then Luke Lawton and Floyd Zubek helped us get back into it. But now EKU ends the first half on another big run and they would not stop there. Not even close. Holiday assisting on Armstead who flashes to the adjacent elbow and he knocks home yet another one. Leads swelling to 15. Saunders goes one on one. Him against Grant Foster and he puts in that one. Saunders, we need to get the ball in his hands a lot more. He's only taken five shots so far. He's made three of them. But how about Stuart Wells, the freshman, making Saunders look silly in his first college start. The freshman, that's just no excuse right there. Just more lazy defense. And David Giles finally finds an open shot. This one just rimming out. But Floyd Zubek once again cleans up the mess. He's surprisingly your, top, your Skyhawks top leading scorer right now. Christopher Fay checks in the game as Stuart Wells' his three point shot just off the mark. Zubek collects rebound number six. And in the open floor, it's David Giles running the break. Tough finish over Wells, but he gets it to drop. Yet another tough game for Giles. He's got eight points, but his efficiency, once again, hard to look at. But how about Gene Schofield also checking into the ball game as he pockets an and one over Carrington on that trip up the floor. And this would not be the last time we hear from Gene Schofield in this one. And when you're down this many points, you're just looking for any bright spots to take in the next game and potentially years to come. 
and years to come would definitely be related more to Schofield. Once again, he's been always a solid bench piece, but it's nice to see him have a little scoring explosion even in the blowout, and easily has been even worse than David Giles today. There's his first made field goal of the ball game, as he, before that shot, he was one of eight from the floor. And now we jump to the last possession for us on offense as all the bench players step in to finish the game and Davion Baez finishes the layup. And it's always nice to see all the guys who don't really play a lot, such as Baez, check in and get a basket even if it's in a blowout. So 72-50 to 50 would be the final today. A very forgettable performance on both sides of the basketball, just terrible defense on the perimeter. That on top of our offense, nobody breaking into double figures across the entire UT Martin roster. Tough days from Easley and Giles, and just a game that we just need to have a short memory of. So looking at the standings, we are tied for third right now. We have the tiebreaker against Austin P. We beat them earlier on in the season, but at the same time, we also have another matchup with them coming up as the schedule to end the year is pretty brutal, as you guys will see in a second. As we look at the top 25 across the country, Duke at the top spot, Washington, my Buckeyes at three, Got Villanova in the top five, Maryland, the Terrapins, breaking to the top 10. Got Memphis having a good year, UT at 12. San Diego State and St. Louis, the mid-major schools, getting up there in the polls as well. And as we look at the mid-major poll, this is the poll that we have a better shot of making one day. Definitely not there yet, but some no-brainers on here like Gonzaga and uh, Vermont. Some really good mid-major programs top this list. But for now, we got to focus on our conference and our polls, Ohio Valley Conference play. And we got four games left on the schedule in the regular season, four very tough games on their own merits alone. And these four last games will determine what team we have here with UT Martin here in year two. Is this a team that we can talk about March Madness with? A team that can compete with the other top clubs in the OVC? Or is this a team that is not as good as we initially thought and they still need more seasoning before we can talk about the NCAA tournament? So as we switch over to the schedule, we got to highlight these last four games on the year for us. We got Tennessee Tech who have beaten us once in a heartbreaker already this year. Tennessee State and Jasper Powell who we just lost to this episode. Moorhead State number two in the conference right now. They began conference play 10-1. And then finally, Austin P, who we're currently tied for right now at 9-7 and seven in conference. So four huge games that we're going to be highlighting next episode, so just stay tuned for that. As we recap the stats on the year with David Giles continuing the slump from the three-point arc, Saunders is starting to threaten him for the top score right now on the team. Easily having some ups and downs, mostly ups though, he's just a hair under 11 points per game. Floyd Zubek displayed some nice scoring in the post this episode, so he's up to 5.2 a game. We got some issues we need to tighten up. We gotta tighten up our defense, especially on the perimeter. Gotta find a way to get David Giles better looks from the floor, and just avoid those slumps that we start games in. We can't play from behind with teams like Moorhead State or Tennessee Tech in the next episode. We've got four really tough games coming up. We've been a underdog most of the series so far, but it's time to find out next time around if UT Martin has what it takes to compete with the top dogs and get a good seed in the OVC tournament, so stay tuned.